All right, so lesson 5.02. Continuing on with this idea of conservation of mass, we are going to talk about balancing reactions. And you'll know you got this if you can take a reaction that doesn't have any coefficients written in and add the appropriate coefficients to balance any reaction equation. All right. So, again, we talked about this on the last slide. So if you have this equation, all right, before I add the coefficient, you can see that there are two hydrogens, two oxygens. There are two hydrogens on this side, but only one oxygen. All right, so to fix that, we add coefficients. All right, so that changes that to two, this to four. So actually we need a two over here to make that four. Now, that was probably way too fast for everything to sink in. But that's the idea behind balancing, is you are going to count how many of each atom are present in the reactants, how many are present in the products, and then you're gonna add coefficients until those numbers are equal. All right, so the way I like to do this and I highly recommend, until you get really comfortable with this, taking the time to write these charts out. So I will do two charts. Oops. One for my reactants, one for my products, and then there's going to be a column for each different kind of atom that is present. All right, so I'm going to have a column for nitrogen and a column for hydrogen. All right, and this side is reactants. This side is products. And I'm just going to mark how many nitrogens are currently present. All right, so based on this little two, I'm gonna put an, two X's in here because there are two nitrogens. Same thing, this subscript two tells me that there are two hydrogens. All right, on the other side, on the product side, there's no number following the nitrogen. All right, so when there's the absence of a number, that just means there's one. All right, we wouldn't even write the N if there were zero. So it's more just in chemistry, you can leave ones off. All right, so I know there's one nitrogen, and then I know there are three hydrogens. All right, so now I'm going to start doing, adding some coefficients. That's what these blanks out front are for. All right, so I'm going to add coefficients to one of these spots to try to fix one of these things. So for me right now, I think an easy fix that I can see is I have two nitrogens in the reactants, but only one in the products. So I need to double my nitrogens in the product side. So I'm going to put a two out front here. All right, and these coefficients, they multiply. All right, so the coefficients... are numbers put in front of a molecule that multiply to all atoms in the molecule. So if you need a definition for kind of what a coefficient does, there you go. But, so what that means is that this 2 is going to multiply by the 1 nitrogen, which will give me 2 nitrogens. But it's also going to multiply by the 3 hydrogens, and 2 times 3 is 6. So I'm going to add 3 more to get the total number of x's up to 6. Alright, so now my nitrogens are balanced. Cool. Now... I need to work on my hydrogens. So I have six on my product side, but only two on my reactant side. I, let's see, two times three will give me six. So I'm gonna put a three in front here. All right, and this three is gonna multiply by that two to give me a total of six hydrogens. And now my hydrogens are balanced. 
All right. You may need to watch this a couple of times to really get this zinc in. And I have more samples going on for on future slides. All right. And we'll keep working with this. But just know the end goal is that each different atom needs to have the same number going in or same number on the reactant side as it does coming out or on the product side. So here I've got three different atoms, potassium, chlorine, and oxygen. All right, so that's Cl, just so you know. So I'm going to make K. CLO, KCLO, and I would say at this point, see if you can try this one on your own. Get everything counted up and working and see if you can determine what's going to balance this. So, doing my initial count, I have one potassium, one chlorine, three oxygens. And I have one potassium, one chlorine, two oxygens. All right. So I'm not seeing an easy way to fix my oxygen problem. Because I have three on this side and two on the other side. And there's no number, no whole number that I can multiply two by in order to get this to balance out. When you run into that situation... All right, you're going to have to find the smallest common multiple that they have in common. There's a lot of commons. If you remember when we were making ionic compounds, when we would run into plus 2, negative 3, we had to get to 6. Same thing's going to happen here. All right, so I want to get my oxygens on the left side up to 6. So I'm going to put a 2 out front here, because that's going to multiply by the 3 to give me 6. But remember, that's also going to multiply to the chlorine and the potassium. All right. And then on the other side, if I multiply this by 3, all right, 3 times 2 is going to be 6. So my oxygens are fixed. Now, I see that I have two potassiums and one potassium, two chlorines, one chlorine. So I'm actually seeing a pretty easy fix here. I'm going to throw a 2 in there, and that'll double my potassium and my chlorine. And now I'm balanced. So here's one more. This is a little on the longer side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you a trick. Because you could create five columns. Because we've got aluminum, we've got bromine, we've got potassium, we've got sulfur, and we've got oxygen. Except I want you to pay attention to this. On both sides, the SO4 is grouped together. That doesn't, the sulfur and the oxygens, they don't break apart from each other. So what you can do, this is one of those polyatomic ions. You can keep them together. Treat that as its own atom. So when I create my diagram, I'm going to have aluminum, bromine, potassium, and then SO4s. All right? If this feels too confusing, then split it up into sulfur and oxygen. But it'll save you a lot of writing if you can wrap your head around the fact that those polyatomic ions, just treat them as if they are their own atom. All right, so we're going to count how many SO4 groups there are. This one also shows us the first time where our atoms don't go in the same order in the product side. I will say if you keep the tables in the same order, that helps visually for you to spot when things are balanced, when you have the same numbers. Because you can sit there and just compare column 1 is by my aluminums. I need that column to be the same. Column 2 is my bromine, so I need second column to match. Okay? So, just to clean up a little bit, I'm going to get rid of this stuff. 
and get my initial countdown. Alright, so I have one aluminum, three bromines, two potassiums, and this is where I find people sometimes get thrown off by this, but really this is one SO4. Alright, so treat it like SO4 is its own entity. On the other side, I have one potassium, one bromine, two aluminums, and three SO4s. All right, because this three outside the parentheses means there's three of that whole group. All right, so to start fixing some things, I'm going to start with aluminum. So to fix aluminum, I have two on the product side, but only one on the reactant side. So I'm going to put a two in here, which will double my aluminums, but that's also going to double my bromines. So aluminum fixed. Bromine. So I have six on my reactant side, but only one on my product side. So I'm going to add a six here. And that's going to give me six bromines. It's also going to give me six potassiums. All right. So I have six potassiums versus two potassiums. So if I throw a three out here, three times two will give me six. So there's my potassium's fixed, that three is also going to multiply by the one sulfate ion. So there'll be three of those, which also happens to fix my sulfates. All right, so now everything's balanced. All right. As we continue on through this unit, every, at every example I'm able to, I will present more practice in balancing. Um, if you are struggling with this, though, come in and work with me on some. We can practice this because it's one of those things some of you will pick up on this super quickly. Others of you, it'll take a little bit of time. But if you practice it, you will get there. 